So, you want to take a spin in the GM chair. Take a crack at rolling the secret dice. See how it all feels. But all these advice videos, blog posts, podcasts, and actual plays have you feeling like you might not be up to snuff? Or maybe you're worried since you've played at the tables of some truly awesome GMs that you just won't live up to the level of excitement and fun that they provide week after week. Well, I'm here to break down a few of those barriers that keep us from throwing the dice on the other side of those 8x10 cardboard panels that we call the Dungeon Master screen. I will start out by saying that being a DM or GM can be really fun. In fact, I'm at the point where I enjoy the GM seat far more than being a player, though both can be fun for different reasons. So what are the common barriers to entry that keep us from donning those special robes and cap and talking in funny voices to our friends? I'll name a few that I've struggled with. Perceived game competence, improv or acting, coming up with a story or world, public speaking, fear of failure. Okay, so there are definitely way more than that, but I wanted to try to cover some basic ones in this video. So let's start with competence. Now it's true that knowing the rules to the game you're playing is pretty important, as oftentimes it will be up to you to have the final say for in the moment rulings. That being said, Outside of savants like Jeremy Crawford, who designs games and gets paid to do so, most of us mere mortals only know a small percentage of the rules to any one game. Just enough to get by, at least in the beginning. So much about being a GM is experience, and that's something that can only come by running the game and making lots of honest mistakes. People, especially your friends, will be patient with you. Heck, some of them are probably still learning their characters and getting that wrong too. So start by trying to figure out the basics of the game you're running. What are the skills the players will need to roll for different actions in the game, and how are those situations resolved? That right there, that's like 75% of the game. I mean sure, there are classes and monsters and spells, but a lot of that you can just look up in the moment. Now, sometimes these target numbers have funny little acronyms like DC for difficulty class or AC for armor class, or terms like spell save, but it all amounts to the same thing. There's typically a number that each skill or action needs to reach for the thing to succeed. So start by figuring out the general ranges of difficulty for those numbers, and which skills pertain to which actions. Every game you encounter will have some kind of table like this, giving you a general idea of those ranges. Don't be afraid to make up those target numbers if you have to. Most of them are arbitrary to begin with. Why is Chainmail AC-16? Because back in 1974, a couple of guys in a basement in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, decided that this number felt mm, about right. Actually, it would have been two hit armor class zero, but that's not the point. You're getting distracted. In a lot of games like D&D, it's important to know how to resolve skill checks and to get a feeling for how difficult any one check should be which often comes with time and experience. If you're playing a d20 game, you can always try the index card RPG method. Pick a set DC or target number for the entire dungeon or adventure. Let's say 14 for this example. If the character needs to jump a chasm, it's a 14. If they need to roll to hit a goblin, they need a 14 or higher. If they need to roll a spell save against the wizard's fireball, you guessed it, 14. Okay, so you want to add some nuance to this method. You can use the hard and easy targets to modify that original adventure target number you've chosen. If it's a hard challenge, increase that number by plus 3 for a DC 17. If it's an easy, subtract 3 for a nice 11. Maybe the first wave of goblins they encounter are mere minions and not battle-hardened warriors, and hitting them is easy. Well, just knock down their ACs to 11 and keep the game moving along. But Jorben, they're wearing leather armor. Well, who cares? Maybe it's ill-fitted or piecemeal armor. The point of this exercise is to get you newbies familiar with DCs, not to simulate reality. If fighting goblins is even simulating reality. Then, when their elder goblin high mage shows up, you can bump up all his target numbers to hard, making his AC and spell saves a mighty 17. Sure, this isn't a perfect method, but it works really well in a pinch, or until you get a sense of where those target numbers should be. Okay, so let's move on to improv and acting skills. This one's easy. If it's fun or helpful for you, then do them. 
If it's not, don't. No one's expecting you to be Christian Bale every time you open your mouth to act as the mayor of a town. And honestly, for the most part, it's not necessary to do it at all. Some people prefer to speak for the NPCs in third person, just saying things like, Jorben gives you a strange look, reaching uneasily for his dagger. He tells you, no one comes to Rivermark without a good reason. See? That works perfectly fine. And honestly, for characters of lesser importance, I do this a lot. I can't remember every voice for every town guard you decide to insight check just because they were standing around doing their jobs. If you really want to do voices, then have fun with it. Get silly. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Do bad accents and try new ones. The weirder the better. You'll have fun, and so will your players. Okay, so coming up with the story or world. A lot of videos cover this topic in detail, probably better than I will here, but you don't have to make a long campaign arc or a fully fleshed out world immediately. Start with where the characters start. A town? A village? Heck, maybe just a dungeon. Give them a good hook, a reason they would need to go on this quest in the first place. Make it something simple and easily actionable, like rescue the mayor's son from the knoll pits by any means necessary. Locate the bandit's hidden keep. Steal the magic staff from the cultists to put an end to their undead abominations. One actionable sentence, and of course, a compelling reward. Okay, so maybe public speaking is sort of an outlier, but here's the thing. If I'm honest, this is one I struggle with. It kept me from running the game for longer than I care to admit, and sometimes I still need a bit of dwarven juice to grease the hinges when the nerves hit. But unless you're planning on running some kind of organized play, those people on the other side of the screen are your friends. They're there to have fun just like you. And besides, once the action gets going, they'll spend most of the game focused on those clickety-clackety dice or discussing strategies amongst themselves, like how they're going to convince the trolls not to eat their new pony. Running an RPG like D&D is akin to running a complex board game, where you happen to know the rules maybe a little better than some of the other players at the table. If nervousness keeps you from running the game, my best advice is to throw them into the action straight away. Don't spend too much time setting up the story or world. No preamble, just roll initiative if you have to. Trust me, you'll get much more comfortable as the game settles into a natural flow. Fear of failure. You know those dungeon tuber videos full of advice about what not to do? about all those terrible GMs out there and catchy titles like 10 Worst Mistakes a GM Can Make. Here's a little secret. I've done them all. I've been all of them. And you know what? I still make some of those mistakes. We all do. It just takes time and experience, and slowly, you get better at it. In the ineffable words of Jake the Dog, sucking at something is the first step towards being sort of good at something. And let me tell you, friend, those are words to live by. If I had given up after my first couple of mediocre games, or first few years of middling adventures, or even first couple of unexceptional campaigns, I wouldn't have become the slap-up, above-average GM I am today. But I'll tell you this, even while committing the worst sins a GM could commit, my friends were still having so much fun, they barely noticed. And not every group is going to mesh well. Not every adventure is going to land, and not every table needs to be critical role. Because once you figure out your style and who your players are, which could take a long while, I guarantee they'll be coming back week after week for years to come and play at your extremely pedestrian fantasy vanilla world. Because playing TTRPGs is unlike any other hobby out there. So give yourself some grace. Now, I know there are plenty of other reasons that probably keep us from running the game. Mostly scheduling, or finding that right group. But that's probably a topic for another video. But if there are some other major barriers to running the game that I missed here, drop them in the comments, and if there are enough, I'll make a second video to address some of those. But until then, thanks for watching. If you like what I do, do all the things. Apparently there's a bell you can ring or something that I never knew about. So yeah, go ahead, ring my bell. Oh, and I wanted to mention, my wife just started up her own booktube channel, so if you're someone who enjoys reading, 
go check out her page here. I'm a fan. Maybe I'm a little biased, but... So until the next video, remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep and traveled to the top of the cinder cloud peaks and forded the ever plains for the answers I seek so beware of the realms where you meddle for the fates can be fickle when the dice settles